Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the fishbone diagram. The fishbone diagram is also known as the Ishikawa diagram, hopefully I pronounce it right, the person that created the diagram, or cause and effect diagram. It's a tool, it's a visual depiction, it's a tool for systematically identifying, presenting all possible causes of the problem and the effects the, that result, so cause and effect. It's useful especially in quality management, but it's useful in any problem for categorizing potential factors causing an overall effect. So structure of the diagram resemble a fish skeleton. And this is a picture that you can see on the screen, but I'm gonna show you how this picture is built from zero on the next slide. So the problem is the head of the fish. So th this is gonna be the problem, the head, and the cause is extending to the left as the bones, these are the bones, which can be split into further branches. We will see this a little bit in details, how the fish bone is structured from zero. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So the first thing you have to do is identify the problem that you are dealing with. So the head of the diagram is the problem. The team defined the problem, defines the problem to be solved. This is typically could be a quality issue or a process inefficiency that's written out clearly. In our example, we're gonna assume it's a late delivery of products. This is the problem, this is the head. Then we're gonna create the main bones, the major causes, Branching out from the problem are lines leading to categories of potential causes. Those could be methods, machines, material, measurement, people, but these can vary depending on the specific context. So basically what you do next is you build the bones of the fish and each bone represents some sort of a cause, major categories of a cause. Well, you're not done yet. What you need to do now, add sub causes. For each main category, so these are the main category, these are the main category, people, machine, measurement, material. You need to identify sub-causes, branches off to identify specific causes. And this step can continue with sub-branches to further present the factors contributing to the main problem. For example, if we look at staff, we would say we have a staff shortage. We could identify other sub-causes for staff. For machines, for example, we would say uh, one of the problem with machines is breakdown then we can have other issues with the machines maybe we need to upgrade our machines for external factors we can blame uh, one factor could be the weather another factor could be traffic again this is environment and the problem is late deliveries for example for material we could say we are using raw uh, raw material that's inferior that's not that's not good issues with the raw material or issues with the suppliers so what we have to do for each major cause, find sub-causes. And this is what it would look like. Then the next thing we do, we analyze all possible causes that are listed in the team to identify those are the most significant, they have the most significant impact, or most likely the root causes of the problem. Then we prioritize the steps. Once we identify what are the main causes, we'll try to improve those issues. So what are the benefits of the fishbone diagram? Now you know what a fishbone diagram is, you know how to build it. What is the benefits? The benefit is it's its collaborative nature. Everyone is contributing and everything is on one page, so everybody's seeing everything on the same page. It facilitates discussion. It's an effective way to break down the problem into a manageable part. For example, one part could be, for example, people. You know, you could tell, you know, who's going to be responsible for that issue. So you could, you could allocate this more easily. So simply put, it's a visual representation that helps the team understand the cause and effect relationship at play and to target those problems in order to solve them. What should you do? Now you should go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, resources that's going to help you understand these concepts, whether you are studying for the CPA exam, CMA exam, taking accounting courses, invest in yourself. 
Take your education seriously. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.